All right, so if you watched the previous video, you saw how I brought up the idea of dividing polynomials, and so there's two ways that you can do it, and I guess for the sake of our assignments, I'll leave it up to you how you do it. I showed you long division, and there's this other perfectly good way to get the answer as far as the problems on the assignment go called synthetic division, okay? All right, so synthetic division. Uh, let's discuss how you do that. There's this one catch to it that it's it's only if you divide by x plus a number or x minus a number. If you ever had anything different or more complicated than that, then you'd have to use long division, all right? But I don't think that's going to be an issue for us. Uh, here goes. How do you do synthetic division? Now, the setup for it is, I think, less natural than long division because in elementary school we learned something like long division when we learned to divide numbers. So it's, it's kind of like, even though that seems bizarre to most people, I suppose, it's, it's kind of like something we learn in elementary school. Okay? Uh, synthetic division, when you start writing it down and setting it up, doesn't look anything like anything you probably saw in elementary school. Uh, so here's how we do it. If I divide by x plus 2, I put a minus 2 in this box right here. Okay. All right, if I divide by x plus 2, you see that plus 2? I take the opposite of that number and I put it in this box. Okay, next thing I do, I draw a line, okay, and I put the coefficients of all the terms as they are in order from highest exponent down up here. So it's like I've got a 1x squared, I've got a 7x, and then I've got a 10. All right. Now, so that's all you have to write down to set it up. I'm going to write down some things with my red pen that are, should be going on in your head once you learn how to do this. But now, as you look at it now, you're going to see the red ink, and that's, that's what you're thinking when you set it up. Uh, that's 1x squared uh, plus 7x plus 10. And 10 is just a number. 10 doesn't have an x in it. It's the one that goes last. And what's that negative 2 mean? That means that we're dividing by, what was it? X plus 2. Yeah, okay. So that's how you would see your problem and set it up. All right, here's what you do from there. Okay, now this is a mathematical procedure, and you just have to learn it. All right, if you're going to do it this way, you just have to learn how to, the steps are done. First step is we just carry this 1 down, and we just like write it right there. Okay, and after that, we multiply this times the 1. What's negative 2 times 1? It's negative 2. Okay. All right, so it's kind of like we so carry down, multiply, and then we'll add these together. What's 7 minus 2? What's 7 plus negative 2? It's going to be 5. Okay. All right, so it's like this kind of zigzag Bring down, multiply, add, bring down, well, yeah, multiply again. What's negative 2 times 5? Negative 10. Okay. And what's negative 10 plus negative 10? 0. All right. Okay. Now, all that is a bunch of numbers. How do you interpret your answer? Uh, the way you interpret your answer is this last thing is always the remainder. Uh, have you heard of a remainder before? Yeah, if you divide 7 into 22, what's the remainder? It's a 1. If you divide this, what's the remainder? 6. So yeah, there's such a thing as a remainder. That last number is always the remainder. As far as these go, this is the quotient. And the x's that these numbers go with are one less in power than what's right above it. So if that's an x squared, what if you drop that power by one? You'll get an x. And if that's an x, what if you drop that down? 
then it, you get nothing, so number. So it's just like that's always one less than whatever you see up there. So this would be 1x plus 5 with a remainder of 0. All right, so that part right there, that's the quotient. Q for quotient, all right? Okay, so we're dividing by x plus 2, and we got the remainder in the quotient. The divisor, the remainder, and the quotient. What form does the answer take? Uh, quotient plus remainder over divisor. No matter how you do it, that's what the answer is going to look like. This synthetic division is just another way to write everything down and keep track of it. Uh, I got everything I need right there, so quotient is x plus 5. Uh, remainder is 0. And the divisor is x plus 2. So I guess technically it would be like that, but what's 0 over x plus 2 is 0, so the answer is just x plus 5. Okay. All right, if you want to, or what do you think is going to happen? If you take, if that's right, x plus 2 times x plus 5, it's going to be x squared plus 7x plus 10. If it's right, that's how it has to work. If That's what division does, okay? All right. So there's your, your first time to see uh, synthetic division, possibly, unless you learned it somewhere else. Let's do another example, and I'm not going to do it differently. I'm going to use the same method, but I've got slightly different numbers, okay? So it says x minus 1 divide into x to the third power plus 7x plus 5, okay? All right, so try to remember that setup. Well, who knows, maybe you can even try to do it by yourself and see if you're right, okay? If I divide by x minus 1, I put a plus 1 right there. So in this little box, I say all that means is I'm going to divide, or I am dividing, by x minus 1. x, and then the opposite of that, minus 1, okay? Then what did we say that you do? Uh, we draw a line right here. Okay. Then what? We'll put the numbers associated with those uh, variables. Okay. I've got a 1x to the third. And you might be inclined to put a 7x, but uh, remember how we take polynomials when we have them and we write them in order of highest exponent? to lowest exponent, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, so I got 1x to the third. Is there a square? There actually, technically there isn't one. It's There must be associated a 0 with it. So it's easy to overlook that. Be careful. It's like with anything in math, you got to be careful. So 1x to the third, 0x squared, 7x plus 5. Do I have everything accounted for? 1x to the third. No x squares. Literally, not there. 7x plus 5. Yeah, everything is accounted for. And those are the numbers that go with it. Okay? All right. Now, the setup will be completed at this point. From here, I just repeat the, the zigzag pattern that you see up there. I bring this number down as 1. What's 1 times 1? 1, okay. What's 0 plus 1? One? 1, okay. So we're going like this, and then like this. What's 1 times 1? One? 1, okay. So we bring down, we multiply, we add, we multiply, we add. What's 7 plus 1? 8. What's 1 times 8? Eight? 8. And 5 plus 8 is 13. Okay. Now we're all done. The only thing that would be left at this point is to interpret those numbers. Uh, why do I say interpret? Well, because whenever you divide anything, numbers or, or letters, I guess, the answer takes the form quotient plus remainder over divisor. So you've got to interpret what all that stuff is. Uh, so we're, the divisor is x minus 1. And I said that last one, that's always the remainder. Okay. And then this will be the quotient, but what are the x's that go with it? I said, like, it's 
one less than whatever that one is up there. See, that's x to the third power. So that means I got a square and then an x and then a number. So like that deal right there, x squared plus x plus 8, that's the quotient. Okay? All right, our answer to any division problem. Quotient, x squared plus x plus 8 plus remainder 13 over divisor x minus 1. Okay, and there's our answer. We can't do anything to reduce that or simplify it, but for the sake of you watching this video, uh, I tell you that that's the form the answer's got to take. All right, see how I got it from this.